Hello and welcome to Let's Make, a series where we recreate video game mechanics using Unreal Engine 4. Today's video is the third and final part of the Spider-Man series, where we will be creating a fully dynamic war running system. In parts 1 and 2 we created an edge detection system so Spidey could execute the web zip move and figured out how to perform basic web swinging, so I'll link to those videos down below. I have to say I'm quite proud of this one. I had the basics of this mechanic finished up about a week ago, but making this system fully dynamic so it can be used with virtually any shape of geometry was a bit of a challenge. The system I've settled on involves a lot of mass, but will allow our character to traverse any surface at any angle, clamber around curved walls and transition seamlessly between them. So let's get to it. First off, we need a way to detect whether there is a climbable surface in front of our character. To do this, we use a line trace which is in the direction of and scaled in length by our current velocity. The trace distance is clamped and scaled down by a factor which gives us just enough time to move smoothly onto the wall. If our trace found a hit, we then compare the normal of the detected surface to the normal of a flat ground surface to see if the surface is at a large enough angle to wall run onto. If the surface is steep enough, we then store the hit normal and the hit location to use later. In order to orient Spider-Man correctly onto the wall surface and to ensure the surface is big enough to traverse, we then perform one more trace, roughly 45 degrees up from the first trace. If this trace also found a hit, we store its hit location as well and we can then enter the wall running state. In order to transition smoothly onto the wall, we first lock the character's movement and rotation so we can program this manually. Then we execute a timeline which interpolates the character's location and rotation to a set position on the wall. To set up this timeline, we first check if the character is sprinting. If he is, then we play the timeline faster and increase the acceleration of the movement component. Even though we are setting his position manually, I found that altering this value while the timeline is playing makes sure that when it finishes, he hits the wall running and doesn't have to accelerate from zero again to reach his top speed. We then store Spidey's starting location, rotation, and the location of the base of the mesh, which we'll use to set his new rotation in a moment. Next, to find the end location for the transition, we use the second trace result we found earlier. But because the character's location is centered in the middle of the capsule, we add half of the capsule's height in the wall normal direction so he doesn't clip into the wall. From here, things start to get tricky. To set up the end rotation for our character, we need to do some maths. Horrible rotation maths. In order to find the target rotation for the wall, we first take the direction vector between the first wall hit and the character's feet, then find its cross product with the normal of the wall we are trying to run on. This provides us with an intermediate vector for the wall which we can then use to find the wall's forward and right vectors by using another cross product with the wall's normal. Now we have the wall's up, forward and right vectors, we can store these values for later and calculate a target rotation for the character using these vectors as axes. I managed to figure this out thanks to a useful reply to a UE4 answer thread, which I'll link to below if you want to have a read yourself. Now we have our target position, we can execute the timeline. While doing this, we also store the character's forward vector, which we'll use later to properly rotate the character when the timeline is complete. When it's complete, we reset our acceleration and free up movement and rotation. So now we are on a surface which can potentially be at any crazy angle. The way we were previously calculating our rotation and movement isn't going to work. While Spider-Man is performing a wall run, we need to constantly set his rotation so that he turns towards his velocity direction and so that he orients to the wall properly if the normal of the surface changes. Again, this was a bit tricky to figure out, but the function I landed on uses similar logic to the previous one. All of Spider-Man's states require their own rotation logic, so when we are wall running, we need to run a new function on tick. 
Like before, we use an intermediate vector to find our new forward and right vectors relative to the walls up vector, but this time we start with the character's velocity direction. Also, if the character is stationary and therefore doesn't have a velocity, we store his last velocity direction so that when he stops, he stays oriented in the last direction he was facing. Rather than set up our own custom movement for Spider-Man, I decided to use the flying mode of the character movement component, which gives us an easy way of controlling his movement without too much extra work. So when we transition to the wall running state, we make sure the new movement mode is set to flying. To calculate Spidey's movement direction whilst on a wall, I had to use a new system which again was a bit tricky to set up. This system works by comparing the forward vector of the camera, which is in this case our controller, to the forward vector and right vector of the wall to calculate how much we should move our character in the forward and right directions. I had to add a bit of an offset here as well to make the system feel right and to account for the camera's location relative to the character. For the right direction we do the same thing but compare our right and forward vectors with the camera's right vector. I had to use this slightly convoluted method because the walls can be inclined and every conventional method of calculating movement direction that I tried broke down when the character went upside down. So, back to the transitions. Now we have movement set up. After the timeline transition we created before, we need to open up two gates. The first gate enables our tick to perform two constant traces down from the character whilst on the wall. These traces work in a similar way to our first two transition traces and provide our rotation function with the up-to-date wall normal and wall hit locations it needs to calculate our rotation. If either trace does not find a hit, then the character is no longer on the wall and we can transition out of the wall room by closing our tick gates and setting the movement mode to falling. The second gate enables our tick to perform another transition trace, which works in a very similar way to the first and allows our character to transition from a wall to another wall if its normal is different enough from the surface we are already on. The only things that are different this time are that we first compare the new wall's normal with a general up vector to see if we can move back to regular ground walking mode and then compare it with the current normal. Only if the new normal is not a flat surface and if it's different enough can we perform the transition timeline again, this time with slightly different speeds. While this transition is being performed, we close the gates again and then reopen them when it's finished. Animating Spider-Man for this move was pretty simple to do. Rather than creating any new states, I modified our existing moving and not moving states using a boolean blend into our new wall running animations. When he is moving, we blend between his crawling animation and our running animation based on the character's speed, and when he stops moving, we use a crawl idle animation. I decided to use two crawl idle animations here to make his movement feel more smooth, which are selected using a custom curve drawn into the crawling animation. This curve just tracks where his feet are and blends him into the best idle animation depending on his position when the movement stops. I also added some dynamic lean to the wall running animation to simulate the effect of gravity on his pose by using the transform modify bone node on the character's root bone. To calculate this amount, I used a simple function inside the animation blueprint which first finds our speed in the right direction relative to the wall and then uses this to scale a lean rotation variable which adds rotation to the character. And finally, to polish up this move, I created some jump animation rules when transitioning from a wall and modified some animations I previously used for the web swing jumps. I had to create custom logic for both a running jump and a static jump here to rotate the character properly when exiting a wall run and match this up with the rotation inside the animation to get this to look right. Also, after all this programming, there was still one thing that our system couldn't achieve. When Spider-Man runs around a curved surface at high speeds, our rotation and movement updates just can't keep up with the surface of the wall, and this happens. 
So to rectify this, I added a downwards force to the character in the inverse direction of the wall's normal to keep the character on the wall at all times. It was really important to scale this force properly, as adding too much force prevented our character from turning properly when running on the wall and affected his movement speed. The force is not only scaled by his velocity, but also scaled by any discrepancy in the distance from the wall hit location the character's position is at. This scaled force is then applied to the character on every tick whilst performing the wall run move. So let's see how this system turned out. Again, creating this mechanic took a bit longer than I'd hoped, so I'm going to save polishing up the Spider-Man project for next time. My plan is to improve on the web swinging a bit, and then clean up the project so it's ready to share. I will be making this project free to download, and giving this away next time, so look out for that in the next week or two. As always, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.